Considering modern Hollywood's track record, it is understandable to be reasonably concerned when they try to make a way-too-late sequel to an iconic franchise. It's even more concerning for me personally when it happens to be a sequel to Beverly Hills Cop, as Axel Foley is easily one of my all-time favorite movie characters. And the last thing I wanted to see was another one of my cinematic heroes sabotaged and exploited, just so they can pass the torch to a new character that I ultimately will not give a shit about. Well, I'm happy to report that after watching Beverly Hills Cop Axel F for myself, that the character of Axel Foley is left mostly unscathed. Let's discuss. I watched so you don't have to. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button, and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Come on. Do it. Do it! After his daughter's life is threatened, wisecracking detective Axel Foley teams up with a new partner and some old pals to turn up the heat on a conspiracy. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking. The moment that you hear that Axel Foley's daughter plays a huge part in this movie, you instantly want to cringe. Recent history has taught us that if a daughter character is included, that they are most likely going to be set up to carry the franchise forward. But much to my surprise, her character is not presented to us in that way in this movie. Get the f*** out of here! No, no, I cannot, it's serious! In fact, her character isn't even a cop, which honestly was a great creative decision. Because if she was a cop, I feel like they would have felt obligated to put her in situations where she is competing with Axel for attention. Instead, she is used to flesh out the character of Axel Foley a little bit more. Axel is obviously much older now, but he's still out there running the streets and hunting down bad guys. But if you think about it, outside of the friendships that we've seen play out on screen, we don't hear much about his personal life in the previous three films. Enter his estranged daughter, and in all fairness, in any other movie, this would have been taken as an opportunity to make Axel out to be a deadbeat dad. But instead, they give them a valid reason for being estranged. And thankfully, they kind of place the blame on both parties in this situation and explicitly state that they are both kind of responsible for their current relationship or lack thereof. And honestly, that felt like the most refreshing thing about this movie. Uh-oh! Someone had some daddy issues. And it also allowed for some genuinely emotional moments between them. His daughter wasn't annoying. His daughter wasn't degrading towards him in an unnatural way. Her presence felt organic and her feelings towards her father felt very genuine. Most of the time when they introduce new characters into these established franchises, those characters are usually pretty forgettable. But this movie had a lot more of Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character than I was expecting. He's essentially Axel's new partner for a good portion of this film, and I actually enjoyed his character quite a bit. You have the expected banter between them, which very much comes off like a clashing of generations, which is to be expected. I just thought their dynamic, while somewhat cliché, was still entertaining. Ironically, I think where this movie is lacking is when things feel a bit too familiar and safe. Tell me a story. F you. They are very obviously playing it safe in some aspects, and in a lot of ways, I think that was the right decision. Sometimes when they get a little too ambitious with these old franchises returning, that's when sh starts to get f***ed up. The plot of this movie is very straightforward. They aren't reinventing the wheel here. The conflict is something that we've seen in movies a million times before. Even as far as hitting very familiar beats to this franchise that are designed to incite a nostalgic reaction. It does kind of muddle the line between nostalgia bait and fan service, but I happen to lean more towards fan service because I think it was done, for the most part, in the right way. They use a lot of the same music from the first two films, which I did not expect. And of course we have returning legacy characters that still work to different degrees. I think it was important that they didn't overuse these characters, and they were placed in the film very strategically. But Taggart, Rosewood, Surge, the whole gang is here once again. 
And the film very much does feel like these characters getting a bit of closure and coming to the realization that nothing lasts forever. Nothing is over! Nothing! As for Axel Foley, of course, played by the GOAT himself, Eddie Murphy. Listen, is he as quick-witted and as funny as he was in the first two films? No. He's obviously much older, and when it comes to the comedy, some things hit and some things don't. And that's to be expected. It's great to see Axel Foley being put in situations again where he has to improvise his way out of them, because that's where he shines. There's even one bit where he starts to come up with a character and a story just to get a hotel room. And a few moments into it, he kind of just says, I'm too tired for this, just give me a room. I found that moment to be genuine and humorous because it did feel like something an older version of Axel Foley would do. That makes sense. The only thing that I would say is there really isn't a standout comedy moment in this film like we had in previous films. As for the movie itself, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say it was an absolute joy to see the Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer logo in front of the credits. For those that don't know, that logo, that producing team, was pretty much a staple when it came to action films that my generation grew up with. And the film itself does feel like a throwback to movies of that generation. Modern action movies often come off as too serious and too choreographed for my taste. And sometimes it's just nice to sit down with an action comedy and watch some over-the-top car chases and shootouts. That's what it's all about. Now again, this movie might be a little bit too familiar in some aspects, but it is proof that the classic cliches and tropes can still work if they are pulled off in the right way. And of course, if they aren't used to completely insult the audience's intelligence. It's true. Quick shout out to Kevin Bacon, another one of those actors that I'm always pleased to see pop up in a movie I'm watching. He feels right at home being this little bit over the top 80s style villain. Even if, again, there wasn't a whole lot about his character from an originality standpoint that stood out. I think the finale of this film was extra safe. In fact, if you compared the finales of the original film and this film, the similarities would be pretty obvious. I'm talking about right down to the location and the situation. Bottom line, Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F, wasn't anything life-changing, and it did feel like Eddie Murphy and the filmmakers pretty much approaching this film and saying, let's just not f this up. There's nothing overly memorable about it from either a action or comedic standpoint, but at the same time, I have to give them some credit for protecting the character of Axel Foley, while also adding another layer to that character that wasn't previously there in past films. It was an entertaining, albeit a somewhat flawed and predictable experience, but I'll take that over a complete desecration of the legacy. So that's why I'm going to give Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. the cat house. Saved by kitty litter. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not going to be fooled by another Hollywood cash grab with a girl boss at the forefront. Do you even know what the term girl boss means anymore? Or do you just say sh to hear yourself talk? Quiet down, chill. After this, it's safe to say you've lost all credibility. He never had any credibility, as far as I'm concerned. <sighs> Christ, another country heard from. Hey, can you guys do me a favor? This is really important, so pay attention. Can one of you give me a ride? My car broke down. I got two daughters, Monique and Unique. They need shoes. I got a baby. He needs diapers. He's shitting all over the house. Can one of you come over here, pick me up in your car, and take me to the grocery store? Oh no, I'm not falling for that. I've seen the first Beverly Hills Cop. I'm not falling for a banana in my tailpipe. Even if I do have a Prius. Weird, from the sound of it, it sounds like you might enjoy it. Y'all be cool. Right on.